When you look at the other presidents that won the Nobel Peace Prize, Teddy Roosevelt in 1906 for the Treaty of Portsmouth ending the Russo-Japanese War, 1919, Woodrow Wilson for helping to end World War I and create the League of Nations, Jimmy Carter for a lifetime of pursuit of peace, and here's President Obama dealing with the incongruity of receiving a peace prize at the same time he's prosecuting two wars. And he kind of summed it up in one line in the very last paragraph, and he said, we can understand that there will be war and still strive for peace. Yeah, he, he walked that line. I mean, more than half this speech was about just war, about on humanitarian uh, basis and on the basis of the need for uh, peace in the future, that sometimes you have war uh, to make peace. And, I, I, you know, he did what a lot of Republicans really wanted him to do in a, a paragraph talking about, hey, we, we've been there over, you know, we, we've mm -hmm. promoted a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. Our blood and treasure has been spent. We're, we have been the superpower that has come to help other nations. Um, that certainly will play well. I think the whole uh, idea of a just war is something that he really needed to do and, and something that uh, he spent a good, obviously he felt he needed to do because he spent a good deal of time on it. And David, one of the th uh, other things, and you had talked about this earlier, though, is uh, how he's what is he going to focus on and where is he going to come down in this speech and one of the things he said was the use of force is not only necessary but morally justified at times then he brought in martin luther king and he said that as martin luther king said when he received this prize violence never brings permanent peace and so he is acknowledging one at the same time acknowledging another the, the struggle between war and peace very much so and I, this uh, address was i think a the personal testament uh, of Barack Obama about this is what I believe and it takes you back to Reinhold Niebuhr who was a major theologian uh, in this country in the 20th century who wrote about a moral man in an immoral society and wrestling with the questions of what, doing what is right in very difficult uh, situations where you're cross pressured and so he spoke as the heir of Martin Luther King but he's also sitting in the chair of Franklin Roosevelt and other American presidents who've taken us to war. And he's trying to reconcile those two traditions, idealism and realism, uh, nonviolence and violence. Uh, and I thought it was a very thoughtful philosophical speech, and it will stand the test of time as a statement about who he is, what his belief system is, and then how these other things then fit within that belief system. And for, for that purpose, uh, I, 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 it was, to me, it, one of the most interesting speeches he's given. I don't think it was quite Philadelphia when he gave the racial speech, uh, but it had many of the same qualities as a person who is wrestling with large questions. And you can almost feel the loneliness of the presidency, someone who's sitting there alone at night thinking about what his role in history is, what he should do. Um, doesn't want to, and I think uh, Suzanne Melville is right, he is a reluctant warrior. Uh, but he's, it, it, it's welcome that a president is trying to think about what is a just war, what is a just peace.